being re-enabled as well too. You know, Faker played a great Ignite Victor, and here we go, picks and bans for game number one between SK Telecom and the Koo Tigers. And we'll see what ends up being chosen. It's it's good to have Victor back. You know, I mean, it's understandable that he was banned for so long. I mean, he's a very high technology champion, so there's going to be a few bugs to work out in like the extra hand sort of software and all that. So really, I mean, are you really surprised that Victor's been crippled by bugs? No, I'm not. Yeah. It's It fits the he lore. He needs to go back to the lab. And I applaud Riot for having the most buggy champion, be lore appropriate at least, <laughs> in, the, in the fact that it's really buggy. So there we go. And oh, there's Victor a big ban. Victor ban from okay. SKT. They're targeting Kuro right here pretty heavily right now, even though the Koo Tigers have not had a lot of success recently running that Lulu and taking out Kalista as well. Bang is professionally undefeated still on Kalista. LeBlanc no longer true a faker, but he is undefeated in Korea, he man. Now, he is now undefeated <laughs> in Korea. We'll cling to that stat any way we can, apparently. So what's the final I mean, ban? Being <laughs> being 12 and 1 on a champion is still pretty ridiculous. It is still pretty good. Yeah, it's still a still a very nice win rate to have. And wow, interesting. The Maokai banned against Smeb. All right. Hmm. Well, again, you know, Maokai is certainly a, a champion that can make a big difference, and Smeb has been the one making the big difference in the Koo Tigers game so far this season. So targeting him a little bit, not a bad idea at all. And what's the last band for the Koo Tigers going to be? Take a long time thinking about this one. Varus. The Varus. Wow, okay, so just not Faker. wanting to deal with it, I guess. Now, well, do you think you go for something like maybe an Alistar first pick? Uh, yes. Maybe, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think they will, just because that has I been so. such a priority for SKT. I actually would have banned the Alistar out here instead of the Varus. But I was a little bit Especially yeah. if the Tigers want to take this Sivir Gragas in the first round. I think they have so many tools to get on top of Varus in that situation that you don't necessarily have to take it away. They could be worried about Kuro's laning phase constantly getting poked out, however. As a team, Sivir Gragas, you can definitely deal with the Varus. That's a good point. So two more picks over to SK Telecom. Cassiopeia would be a, a very strong pickup for Faker, of course. He is and still professionally undefeated on Cassiopeia. True enough. Uh, Bang's been playing plenty of Corky. Bang's been playing pretty much plenty of everything in the meta right now. As far as junglers go, you've still got a lot of good options for Bengi, so I suppose you don't really need to pick anything for him now. He's got the Rek'Sai he can choose, which I think, you know, if I had to think about jungle threats, I feel like Rek'Sai is a bigger threat than Faker's Varus, if we're really talking about how big this Varus ban is. Yeah, and he could just be going for the Evelyn. Well, that would be a bit looking interesting. Looking to deal with this Gragas, apply some early huh. pressure like the Gragas can. True enough. So when we have Rumble already locked in for Marin, of course, one of Marin's best champions. We often see bans against SK Telecom that particular pick. They've got a lot of long-range engage, so this is going to mean that the Koo Tigers can't pick something too stationary in the mid lane or AD carry position if they don't well, want to get flanked. It's already making that Sivir pick a bit risky. You know, I mean, picking it so early, do you think that was uh, too no, much of a chance? You no? can just All run right. forward onto the Rumble and avoid the flank, and they're going to go ahead wow. and take the Azir and the Hecarim. It's starting to look like a KT composition coming out of the Koo Tigers right now. Lots of hard, hard engage. Yeah. Heavy dive. Yeah, so. this will be really interesting. Much more fast-paced, balls-to-the-wall composition from the Tigers than we're used to seeing. They tend to be a more reserved, poke-heavy team, generally speaking, but they're going to be trying to fight fire with fire here. And what are the last two picks going to be? Cassiopeia would be okay here. What about, like, a, a Morgana, actually? Something to potentially stop some of that engage? Ah, uh, it's probably wouldn't work. If, I think Cassiopeia is going to be what they're going to do. In gonna the mid lane, with. I think they need more yeah. damage out there. And okay. Huh. I don't know if this is a mid rumble or if it's going to be a mid Aurelia. Interesting. All right. Well, Corky Aurelia chosen, and Gorilla may just be going with that safe Jana pick. But Koo Tigers have got to be scratching their heads right now. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Gorilla on your screen right now, he looks a bit confused. Yeah. I think you just take the Jana. Because they want pick. to disengage, and yeah. as soon as the Q is used onto Aurelia, she just has to run back in. I don't know which one of these Faker is going to play. I would suspect this is a mid Aurelia. You know, I mean, he has played plenty of mid Riven in the past. I mean, playing some of those melee AD mids isn't without precedent for Faker, so 
Maybe? Regardless, SKT has set them up for a two-item power spike with this team composition, pretty much. If it goes late, they're going to have a lot of problems. Same could have been said, and in fact was said by me last week about their Vera Solution Nunu comp. But they executed the timing very well. They baited Najin into a bad fight and a bad timing for Najin. So it will be Janna at the support position, oh. looking just for some more peel in that back line. And maybe this will be a mid rumble after all here. I mean, they have four melee no, champions, and it should be mid. I, it should be mid Aurelia. That would be my assumption here, because you're going to be able to get on top of the Azir and stun him very effectively. Well, it is. Uh, they've got about 15 more seconds to switch it. You're allowed to change champions up until 20 seconds until the lobby ends. Yeah, pretty sure this is, we're gonna stick with this one just because Rumble would have a harder time farming in the mid lane against the Azir. That's true. Uh, generally speaking, doesn't have that same sustain that Aurelia has with E10 style. Ah, well, Faker on Aurelia. I... Stofe looks very confused right now in the booth. No, the agony of the Nofe continues, man. <laughs> the uh, the Champion Spring Finals were pretty rough for him, and it's not looking any easier running into SK Telecom here in their first duel in the summer season. Well, I can tell you right now, I don't even have to look it up. This is Faker's first game on Aurelia oh, yeah. professionally. Well, this is why Faker's Faker. He yeah, can man. pull out such a staggering array of champion picks and, and matchups that it's extremely difficult to prepare for him. We'll see if this counter pick to his ear works. I am obviously quite unfamiliar with this matchup, but it'll be interesting to see what Faker is going to be maxing in this lane if he, I would assume, E. Faker is like the only person who, when he says he can play everything, he really can play everything, guys. And let's see who takes game one, SKT versus Koo Tigers. Let's get in the game. All right, wow, that's exciting. As we go into SK Telecom T1 versus Koo Tigers. SKT fans and the Koo Tigers fans as well packing the studio today. Pretty high profile match to start things off with, but uh, certainly a match that on paper or based on recent results seems a bit one-sided. Wow, Bengi taking some pretty heavy damage from Smeb, but dealing a bit himself as well with those hate spikes. Marin coming up. Doesn't even need to throw out one of those harpoons. Uh oh, Omarin. Ooh, this is interesting. Bengi actually taking that's a lot of damage. That's actually really huge. Yeah, it is. They prevent that recall, and that's going to make it a bit tough okay. for Bengi to be get back in position in time. Well, Wisdom taking quite a bit of damage as well, but uh, we can see Smeb right there just burning an early flask charge since he's going to be going to a jungle camp anyway and then mm. recalling to refill his flask. So that little bit of harassment, Bengi does have a chance to go back at this stage and a little bit slower start though not yeah. going to be yeah. out in the jungle at 154 like you would normally want to be oh. if you were playing jungle <laughs> and grog is still going to be delayed as well and here we go the harassment coming in looks like it will be a q start and i have no idea what to think about this mid aurelia though obviously we're going to be taking a look at this matchup and seeing if we can dissect it a little bit as it evolves faker Playing mid Varus, now busting out the mid Aurelia. We just don't know what we're going to... These last two seasons, you just never know what Faker's going to pick. Yep. I mean, as diverse as his champion pool was before, in 2015, it's gotten like... It feels like it's gotten like twice as deep, you know? And he did play something like 13 different champions last season out of yeah. the mid lane, so it was... Pretty, pretty insane. Pretty large number. And, of course, Azir, before he gets an ability to move those Sand Soldiers, if he puts a Soldier down, Aurelia can just queue him immediately and start autoing him early, and that's kind of what we're seeing in the mid lane. Playing pretty aggressively. No wards yet down around mid to help him out, Bengi. And Wisdom with the slower starts due to that kind of wacky early skirmish. I suppose after losing a little bit of health, Aurelia would be fairly safe against ganks with the Equilibrium Strike. It's hard to judge, I guess, because we haven't really seen it much, but... 
Well, short lane too, she has a, a good amount of ability. Yeah, true. And also, she has that CC reduction as well on her passive, so it does make her harder to lock down. He's been farming well. He does have a tiny bit of a CS lead, but you do get poked when you go in to uh, grab CS. I mean, those Sand Soldiers are going to get auto attacks off. So he will be taking some damage anyway. Yeah, I really don't know what this matchup is supposed to do. That's why we're going to take a look at it. Can't wait to see what exactly he's going to be maxing. Bang with the 90.9% .9 career win rate on Corky. Wow. And he's played quite a few Corky games, yep. too. Was a priority for Korean teams. First pick worthy a lot of the time. Yep. Throughout the spring season. Certainly was. The latest thing, though, to hit Korea is, is toboggan Corky. Yeah, it's very popular recently, isn't it? It is, yeah. As long as Red Baron Corky never becomes popular, then I'll be You love be the whirring of the propeller, don't I you? hate the whirring of the propeller, man. It's like the, the telltale heart in League of Legends. You hear it long enough, you'll just want to, like, murder your lane partner. Interesting. Any support player that's lane the with that homage, Corky will tell you the that. The homage to Poe. That's right. What would... How could you talk about League of Legends without referencing Edgar Allan Poe, right? Impossible. It's so natural, right? Well, Koo Tigers of this composition definitely going to have a pretty big late game edge. They're going to scale a lot better, so SKT, I'm not sure. I mean, with this Aurelia split pushing early, it could be a major threat. But they need to make that work. Wisdom oh, coming wisdom. in on Baran. Yeah, trying for a gank on Baran here. We'll see what he can do. There's a body slam. Baran taking a lot of damage. Burns that flash, but he's still very low. Doesn't look like they'll be able to quite finish him off, though. Yep, Baran again doing that Baran thing. Has a ward in his inventory. Does not place it down as he pushes up on Rumble. <laughs> this is something that is unfortunately rather common for Baran. It's the comfort ward. You know, he just likes to have it, you know, just in case. Well, he needs it in his pocket, in his presence. Otherwise... It, it's no longer comforting if to him. If he puts that ward in the brush, he can't see it. And then it's not doing any, him any good, right? He's like, I can't see my ward. Where is it? Is the ward OK? What's happening to this ward? Probably not. Wisdom's going to come back and lens it. Probably. The ward's days are numbered. OK. Well, other than that, not a lot of excitement here early on. Wish we nope. could get Aurelia clicked on so I could figure out. Just use your imagination like all good analysts do, Monte Cristo. <laughs> That's right, the power of the imagination. That's right. Haven't you ever watched Reading Rainbow? Well, Marin able to stay even in CS more or less with Smeb and push him back under turret for now. Faker actually starting to develop a decent little CS lead against Kuro, surprisingly enough. Well, he's been pushed back under his turret a lot, too. So Kuro's been afraid of walking forward, lest yeah, he true, get true. ganked from behind. So there has been that concern I suppose that is running the, through his mind. That is kind of one of the things is it's hard to it's hard not to push the lane with Lucian, you know? Yeah, so Faker hits level six first and then does a ton of damage. Does a ton of damage, just goes for a little bit of an all-in with the Transcendent Blades right there. Holds on to his Ignite, but he does burn Kuro's Cleanse. Well, Bengi goes on to Wisdom, but Wisdom turning around with a decent amount of damage himself. Bengi may have overstepped his limits a little bit here. Getting pretty chunked down before making it back into the jungle. Meanwhile, Prey getting very low in bot, bot lane. There's the exhaust as they turn around onto Bang. Bang getting very low, and now Smeb comes in. Bang flashes out of the Onslaught of Shadows. Marin TP's down as well, but Prey manages to make it out. Gorilla low, and first blood goes to Bang. Wow, that was so close, but in the end, SKT comes out with the first blood. If Smeb had actually hit his ult onto Bang right there, he probably could have cleaned that one up, but instead, very patient of, of Bang to wait for that flash until the last second. Yeah, so he does, in fact, turn it around in the end. Bengi looking for a little bit more right here. He's going to at least delay Smeb's recall. Uh, with all those minions can. there. Well, here he goes. Nice. So yep. that's just a little something annoying. Marin going to maybe get a slight CS lead as a result of that. But Smeb didn't even have time to buy items yet. Hmm. Marin going for the home guard boots, actually, for his first pickup. That's what Marin loves to do, though. That's just him as a player. He really likes early home guards whenever he can get them. And so he will be just not even going for a haunting, guys. Smeb actually cowl first, so not going to get that early saber for hmm. the challenging smite. That means if he's farming the jungle, he's just not going to get as much money out of it either. All right. Interestingly enough, uh, Faker 
because of his ability to dash around, is actually able to dodge a lot of these attacks from the Sand Soldiers. Well, he also has Phage now, which really helps him okay. with that, too. Yeah, that does help. Hmm. Interesting. Again, the CS lead still looking pretty good for Faker in this mid lane. And he's going to go take a few Sand Soldiers right there. Take some nice chunks, but with that Flask, he just can keep on going back to that sustain again yeah. with Aurelia's W also. Right. E10 style. And I, I bet you Kuro's not used to playing this matchup, so there's a bit of mind game advantage there too. Comfort for Faker, well, always some questions from Kuro's end. Bengi still not level six, still walking up, just protecting Marin's booty up here in the top lane. <laughs> His robo booty. His robo booty. Now Bengi finds the pink ward. He's gonna set it on fire with his fists and claws. They really want to make this gank work right now. Wolf not yet six, so he's going to be pretty squishy there. Oh, but there. Pulverize, oh, here comes Wisdom, though. Wolf immediately flashes out of nice there. Explosive ult. cast, hits Bang. They slow him down enough to get the kill. Wolf, or uh, Gorilla, rather, gets that one. The, re the revenge of Gorilla. Now, can That's they right. take a dragon off of this? Bengi's up in the top side trying to steal a red buff at the moment. If they do, well, Equalizer used there. I was going to say maybe they can dive Smeb, but not without that ultimate. Faker, Kuro pushes Faker back under the turret. So a lot of damage done on both sides. Faker coming out a little bit ahead health-wise, but he's got to watch out. Wisdom coming through, but with no alt and Bengi right there, I think Faker's perfectly safe. Yeah, and Faker he's also, also, saw, his, he also yeah. saw his flash, so if he needs to get uh, out, right. he can. Bengi wants to go for round two right here, but with Gorilla also in the mid lane. I don't think that's going to be an attractive option. They're just trying to cover risky. Kuro as he recalls. So no dragon attempt actually coming in for the Ku Tigers. Instead, just giving Kuro a little bit of backup. Faker's Ignite was blown on that engage. So that was a nice ult from Kuro to counter that engage. Oh, Bengi. Kuro has to flash back into the brush. No blue buff for him right that now. That was actually really cute by Bengi. Waiting, knowing the timer was going to come up and being able to harass right there. Faker is still. Well, I guess Kuro did get the blue buff after all, so at least he's got that going for him. Yeah, but forcing that flash against this mobile, highly mobile Aurelia is a bit of an issue. Certainly can be. Faker's just going to swag recall right in the middle of lane. So there's going to be a big power spike timing here at two items for this team. Uh, Rumble, Aurelia, and Corky all doing very well, kind of hitting their peak in the terms of power in the game against their opponents with two to three items, and if they can't make a big lead open up right there, I wouldn't want to go into a four or five item game against what the Ku Tigers are bringing to the table because pretty much they're going to be outscaled across the board. They, they are going to be outscaled across the board with the exception of maybe Alistair against Janna. I mean, it was like we talked about with the top Nunu mid Varus game that SKT played. I mean, they had a very narrow window to make it work, and they did make it work, so Let's see if they can repeat a rather difficult comp win here in game number one versus the Tigers. Now, nobody's really gone for Dragon yet. SKT with just a bit of vision via that Rift Scuttler. And here comes Wisdom again. They really want to try to focus on this bot lane, apparently. Trying to find another gank down here. Oh, I think they spotted him, though. It's hard to tell from that. I couldn't see myself. And they are just going to actually okay. use the scrying orb on that brush that has a pink board in it. No blue buff being given over to Faker. And he may just take that right up to the top lane, too. Oh, we'll see. That was such a nice gank from Wisdom earlier on where he interrupted the Valk yeah. against the wall with his explosive cast. So he made it appear like he was leaving, but it's not the sneakiest Gragas that we've ever seen. He's going to try and be patient and wait this one out, but they may just put another ward in there. Well, they know he's there. I mean. Not a whole lot of chances that Bang and Wolf are going to. Well, move they don't far know that he stayed there. Is the thing. Oh, They're suppose. playing cautiously, regardless. They're at well, least having some sorry. respect for the possibility that he could be there. Kuro's continuing just to try and take some of these Raptors here, throwing his Sand Soldiers over the side, not wanting to walk up in CS, so putting himself in a long lane situation. Lots of wards. So Faker maxing Bengi. E first on this Aurelia. Yeah, that's what I like. thought. That's what I thought he'd be doing. Well, you were right. Good job. <laughs> Thanks.
Well, it's just against the Azir because you assume that when you go in, you're going to have lower HP and therefore get the stun on Equilibrium Strike. Right. Uh, you have a really, I mean, it's 2.25 seconds in max rank. So it's a really long stun as far as League of Legends goes. Uh, Marin has been able to poke this turret almost all the way down. Just a couple more waves and he should have SK Telecom's first turret of the game. And once he has that... Gragas right. again on the bottom side. Yep. Oh, he's made it all the way into the bottom brush now. And only Bang there at the moment. Wolf is about to get back. But they've got to be pretty careful. Okay, so they see Wolf coming back with the ward. And Wolf is probably just going to check this brush. Yep, just walking right in. Flash headbutt onto Bang. Nice. Cast coming in. Teleport coming in for the Koo Tigers as well. Bang still in a lot of problems. Smab coming in. And Prey manages to pick up that kill. So another gank on the bot lane, and they're going to try to transition this right into a dragon. Meanwhile, the top turret does go down in favor of SK Telecom at the same time. So, yes, they are trying to at least just snowball this bottom lane right now. Trying to take out Bang and Wolf a couple of times in the transition to the dragon. Will they lose a tier 2 in the top side, though? Smeb recalling after the dragon has already been taken. So that top turret had a lot of CS just driven into it right there. As we can see, Marin now about 30 CS up. Yeah. And has teleport advantage right now, so he has some time to make some pressure plays on the map if he so chooses. So where do you go, though, with this rumble? You know, do you try to just watch for an opportunity no, in bot I, lane since Dragon is done? I try and gank mid lane, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you can group up right now. You're going to have a double Trinity Force power spike soon with Aurelia and Quarky, and you can dive really efficiently by just laying out that equalizer and having the Aurelia follow up. So try and kill this Azir. I suppose. Smeb's going to pick up a little bit more farm in the top lane now. Yeah, Bang has been quite camped on the bot lane. And they catch Gorilla here. Bengi and Wolf in the enemy jungle. Gorilla trying to get away. Nice whirlwind. And he has to burn his ult, but at least he makes it out. Used his exhaust, though, there, too. Yeah, it looks like Smeb and Marin still dueling right here. Smeb finally has the challenging smite. But he is still a little bit scale scared. Prey has to back way off this tower because... SK Telecom got the deep boards in and did a great job of controlling the bottom side. So wow. he knows he's picking them. He knows they're in there right now. They're taking the blue buff, but there's just nothing he can do about it. Wow, and after the kills, after the dragon, SKT just seizing control of the bottom half of the map. Well, this is what was great about uh, what a little uh, about what SK Telecom just did. So they knew Morin had pressure topside and that he was winning the duels with Smeb uh, with his rumble. And so, as we see, Smeb and Marin going yep, at it. I'd say that's a one duel. Smeb and a lot of trouble goes down 1v1. Marin gets the kill. Wisdom looking for a bit of revenge. Gets, oh, he didn't get the slow on the explosive cask. Didn't quite hit Marin with that ultimate. Marin a burned his flash to coming, get away. But I don't think he could do anything. So no, he can't get Marin there. Marin was free to play aggressively because he has two pink wards right there and a ward by the Krux. So gets a great solo kill and then SKT says, hey, we're going to transition pressure into the bottom side because you have to send one person up to deal with Smeb. So they start the invade. Whoa, Baker going in on a prey there. A lot of damage, but taking a bunch of turret hits in the process. I guess Bang and Bengi were there. I thought maybe they could do something to blow him up. But they blew on the hunt, and they poked yeah. Sivir out. So already mission success. So considering they already had pressure, if they said, we're putting two people in your jungle, and then that means meant that Prey was entirely zoned off the turret and he couldn't defend it. So really good map play from SK Telecom. Applying pressure in all of the right areas to maximize it. Now Faker's going to start split pushing. Yep, that's right. This Aurelia is already getting pretty scary with that Trinity Force being done. SKT has been so good at hitting their power spikes and their timings the last couple of weeks. And again here, this is exactly what they need to do. Get the Aurelia rolling. Who is going to stop the Aurelia right now? Smeb is itemized for magic resist. He can't do it. Uh, there's no one else. There's no one else to stop the Aurelia. There's a real threat of Faker just all inning the AD carry right now. And in the meantime, Bang is just applying pressure in the mid lane with Corky's rockets after the Trinity Force. This is an excellent, excellent timing. I just so feel Ku, like Ku, Ku, just, they have to hold on right now. They have good wave clear. The Zier will allow them to turtle if they need to. I feel like I want to call SKT the puppet masters this season because they seem to be dictating where the enemy team goes on the map pretty much the entire game long. Well, the thing is, you just can't fall into their trap. If you're Koo right now, you just accept the fact you need to just play passively. You got the first dragon, so SKT can't accelerate the game by getting to the fifth dragon stack very quickly. First dragon was also taken late. 
So True. at this point, if SKT wants five dragons, we're still looking at a 45, 50 minute game where Ku will have a late game advantage by that point, so. Well, that mid lane turret, very, very low. SKT ready to knock down the final outer turret. Second dragon's coming up in about two minutes here, too. So yeah, SKT, or, or Ku Tigers, rather, I mean, yeah, they can just pull back and play passively, but do you think they can stop the push from SKT? Oh, yeah. I, I think they have the, the long-range poke and wave clear in order mm -hmm. to deal with that. Uh, the question is who's going to stop Faker. As long as Faker keeps split pushing, that's a problem. That's the biggest problem right now. I suppose. Oh, uh, Marin up on top of the map right now. They've got the ADC in the top laner there. Smap coming in. Prey pops on the hunt. They try to push Marin back just a little bit. There's the Onslaught of Shadows. Nice fear. Marin goes right back into Prey. Drops that Equalizer. Can he get back to his turret? No flash. Doesn't look like he'll make it. And Prey picks up another kill there. And Prey just waiting very patiently in that brush. And they put they push out very far into that lane, into territory there you would think would be dangerous to make that play. But he's it got was. the backup right there. Now the Tiger's putting damage onto the mid lane turret. They're going to get it. Faker is not quite going to get the turret in the bottom lane, but he can deal with Smeb in a 1v1. Yeah, Smeb teleporting to the bot lane to try to save it from Faker's split pushing. Bengi, meanwhile, gets caught in the enemy jungle. Wisdom goes in for the body slam, does a, bot a bit of damage. Nice knock up from that whirlwind. Wolf comes in, pushes Wisdom back again. Kuro joining the fight as well. Faker comes in, but it doesn't want to fight that 4v3. They want to wait for Bang to get there, and he almost is. Is he going to fall over the wall? He is there. going way in. There's a teleport coming in for Marn as well. Gets knocked back by the Emperor's Divide immediately, though. And it looks like the Tigers are going to be able to disengage, getting poked out heavily. So this could lead to a Tier 2 turret and a Dragon on the way out for SKT. They might just go with the Dragon here. I think they just go with the Dragon right now and then see what they can do in a little bit. So. Ku Tigers playing the map well, though, got the pick in the top side before the Dragon was coming up, so it was pretty safe for them to do. They take out the mid lane tier one turret at the same time, uh, so they actually get their first tower of the game in that instance, and they get some damage down on the top side also. SKT not really coming out with a whole lot besides the Dragon, and it's just their first of the game. So Ku holding on pretty well right now. It's nice to get that little boost in attack damage and magic damage, though, for SK Telecom, so. We'll see if they can use that to push any farther into the opponent's side of the map right now. They ah. still have the bottom side pretty well warded. Marin going for the Rylice first. Oh, wow. Once the slow zones and the control. So they're trying to isolate targets for Aurelia right now to just burn down with a bunch of auto attacks. Makes sense. And true damage. Makes sense. So not the most high damage build, but this is all this setup for the Aurelia and the Corky when they're at their maximum point of damage, and they don't want Ku to have such a large degree of mobility in these team fights. I gotta say too, I, I've liked the pressure that Wisdom has been able to put on the game so far for the Ku Tigers. He Wisdom's looks, had some great ganks. He looks very comfortable on that Gragas, and after you know the problems that the Ku Tigers were having with Lee, this may be a bit of a bright spot. You know, no matter what happens this series. Yeah. Okay. Well. This is the time, though, for SKT. They have to get more right now. They're only a thousand gold in the lead. That's not enough. I feel like this season has been SK Telecom playing a, a game of what champions can we win with in, in the mid lane. You know, like what should we try this week? Varus? Oh, we did that. Let's just try Aurelia this time around. Let's see if Faker can win with Aurelia. Well, he did put the pressure down on Akuro early, but Kuro has bounced back with his some solid CS number. Bengi just going to clear that slow with the Evelyn W and pop right out of the pit. I think if that all-in that Faker had attempted had worked, we'd be in a bit of a different situation That's with this true. Aurelia. And it was close, but Kuro was able to kind of fend it off, and I think that uh, that might cause SKT some problems in the late game. Faker split pushing in the top side. This is where you want your mid laner split pushing if there's no dragon to be taken right there because you're responding to the possibility of a Baron in the mid game with your top laner. Typically, who has teleport up, not in this case, but. Right. Well, Marin, regardless, pushing that bot lane. And SK Telecom just trying to get a 1 3 1 going and just trying to split up the Ku Tigers. I mean, it's hard to play defensively when you're putting yourself in these kind of risky 1v1 situations, I suppose. Yeah. Also, Marin, that's really annoying for a melee champion like 
heck for him to deal with that constant slowing because there's right. no way you can not get kited in that situation by Electro Harpoons. And if Heck Grim gets slowed, he legitimately does less damage too. Yep. <laughs> Just kind of interesting. Looks like this mid turret is going to go down uh, very soon. Just a couple more auto attacks from Bang. If Wolf had tanked that, they probably could have taken it out. No rush though. I mean, no real crucial objectives at the moment to uh, worry about. Luden's finished on Kuro now. So he'll be having a little bit more damage, a little bit more poke because of that. Much better vision control. Look at that. Five pink wards on the map down for SK Telecom this game. Five. Very nice. So rare to see that this early on. But throughout this entire game, they've been winning the vision battle. Just getting the deep wards in, keeping their own ward line up and protecting it very well. There hasn't been enough clearing so far from the Ku Tigers, and that means that they don't have any eyes on Baron right now. That is a very dangerous prospect. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, once you kind of control the vision like this, you make it very difficult for roles like the ADC to try to catch up if they start getting behind too. So, pray not behind right now. Ahead, in fact, over Bang, but still. Kind of being uh, a little bit on edge. But they're slowly getting pushed in. But yeah. again, Ku have done a very good job of turtling here. Perhaps a bit too slowly, huh? Well, yeah, I, I think SKT, they're, they're missing their window right now. They haven't gotten a whole lot, and it's just been a long time coming. So if Ku doesn't fight this next dragon either, if they just try and give that up, maybe push out their lanes, try and take that tier one in the top side, hold on to their mid lane themselves. I, They'll be, they'll be in prime position to just head into the late game and now if that happens, scale. If that happens, does that kind of put like a lot of pressure on SK Telecom to find a way to get a Baron because you need those sort of big buffs to have yeah. some relevance in the later stages? Of the yeah, game? or to get a pick. Yeah. You have to start using this vision a little better to set up picks and force Ku Tigers to face check something. Makes sense. Either way, it's still a little bit of a gold lead anyway for SK Telecom. One minute away from that third dragon. Both teams with one at the moment. Faker already setting things up with the Rift Scuttler. Has the frozen heart now. Yep. So getting pretty tanky. And not necessarily against magic damage, though. Well, but two of the major threats are physical damage, so yeah. that's... Still going to be pretty useful, and he has the Merc Treads too. He should be mobile enough that Azir won't be doing too much damage to him oh, in yeah. these team fights. So about 30 seconds now until Dragon for game number one here. This is Dragon coming up next. SK Telecom already has a lot of priority on that side of the map. They're going yep. to take They're the blue ready. buff away as well, Bengi. Grabbing it, and they don't have mid lane pushed out, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's hard for them to get that edge considering they haven't yet taken out the mid lane turret. You know, if you let mid lane push up a little bit too, perhaps, um, you can try to give the Ku Tigers kind of a difficult decision. You know, do they want to maybe try to focus on mid and give up the dragon, or do they try to come in and fight? Well, Marin is at least pushing the top side up, so there's no way really that the Tigers can trade for something right here. They have to go for this dragon or just give it up right off the bat. Hmm. Spell shield from Prey. Dragon is live, and SK Telecom looking to take it. They've got Ku kind of bottled up in that little choke point. And just holding off right there for the moment. And playing patiently. So Ku wants to delay this dragon until Smeb pushes that lane all the way back up into the tier one so that they can at least trade something if SKT actually starts the dragon while controlling the mid side, making sure. And there oh, they go, Sivirol. they found Marin. Yeah, they're going to try to make a pick here. Marin drops that equalizer. with Smeb teleporting in behind, though. There's the Onslaught of Shadows. Wolf coming to try to save him. Can't do it. Wolf suddenly almost finds himself in a 1v5. Here comes Resk of SKT. They're getting some decent poke in. If they can poke down the Ku Tigers enough, they can maybe take Dragon because of the ults used. And we'll see if they want to trade for this Tier 2 here. They've got the Azir turret down as well. Yep, there goes the Tier 2. And can SK Telecom even take this really Dragon? Really good move by the Tigers. They 
haven't been that good at setting up these picks. Now they're going to go on to Smet. Faker's there. Faker's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, not doing any in return to this Hecker and Bengi in the middle of everything right now, getting totally caught out. Explosive cask used. Wolf comes in. There's a four-man pulverize. Kuro knocked back into the play, and Faker takes him out. Bang on the run now. Smet trying to chase him down, but here comes Faker and Wolf from behind. Bengi re-entering the fight, even low health. Faker running from Smeb. Smeb doesn't know which direction to go. Keeps turning around. They eventually get the kill onto Wolf, though. And Prey turning around. Oh, he gets a kill onto... Well, Bang actually gets a kill onto Prey. Faker! Oh, double. It's a double kill! Getting those resets. And that is what SKT needed. They actually I managed to get the ace. I believe they got that ace. That was incredible. They played the periphery so well and they scrambled on the outside to force the skirmishes from the Koo Tigers. Faker even flashed on top of Prey and tried to EM, but Prey actually hit his shield right there. And that was such an amazing turnaround from SK Telecom. And they're even going to get Baron off of Marin that still being nearly full health going into this one. What a fight. That was one of the you best team fights I've ever seen. You shouldn't have been able to do that. Let's watch this again. So they get onto Bengi, and Bengi gets chunked out. Remember, Marin's already dead. And yes, they use the ult. Kuro gets punted out by Wolf and destroyed immediately. Meanwhile, Faker gets the exhaust off, taking some damage. Remember, he's got Frozen Heart, though. Faker actually uses this Chilling Smite onto Wisdom, I think, right there. Mm. And then watch this. Coming back in, there's the Spell Shield from the Flash E, but he, the damage from the Trinity Force, two Sheens smacking him around. And just the constant poke <laughs> gets the reset wow. from the Sheen-empowered Q. And why not take another Dragon after that as well? SK Telecom grabbing all the objectives at the moment. I thought Faker was dead to pray for sure, 100%. And he managed to finish him off. Well, this is SK Telecom. This is just what they do. They just find these opportunities and they capitalize the, on them like no other team can. The patience was so good, though. And yeah. honestly, the biggest mistake in that fight was probably Kuro getting too close to Wolf and getting ejected via the headbutt and then destroyed by Double Sheen. It was but a great just, play. If you look at the, the, the how poised SKT was in that situation, because what they were doing was they were playing around Sheen right yeah. there. They had the two Sheens, so they kept poking, and they would engage every few seconds with these little bits of burst damage, then pull back out using the mobility that comes from the Aurelia and this and uh, the, the Valkon Quirky, and then just continuously poking around that. So every two seconds, getting a little bit more damage down, and that, that way they traded so efe efficiently over the course of that fight. Really uh, spectacular to watch. They immediately grabbed two turrets out of it, too as well. So out of that fight, they got Baron, they got Dragon, they got kills, two tier two turrets. Wow. And Blade of the Ruin King now done on the Faker as well. Yeah. It's just about split pushing right at the moment. They're tr gonna try and 1-3-1 one, one, or 4-1 this and continue to gobble up towers and get an even bigger gold lead than they already have. And now they're in a comfortable position where they can take home this game even with the composition coming 5,000, 7,000 gold up. They should be A-OK. -okay. You know, and the Koo Tigers were playing well before that happened, and I mean, they that, were. It, was, it was such a close team fight, too. Like They're, you said, if, if Kuro hadn't gotten knocked out, that probably would have gone differently. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to, you know, it's hard to take away from the Koo Tigers did, too much with this one. They did invest a lot in the pick that they made on Damar in terms of ultimates, uh, but it was looking very promising besides that. And, you know, the Koo Tigers, I think the, the mistake there is continuing to try and fight during the power spike that SKT has. I think if, this is one of the reasons why you want to play more conservatively. If you're the Tigers, just delaying the dragon. Uh oh, uh -oh. Smeb in a little bit of trouble. Faker and Bengi catching him. Here comes Wolf, though, to knock him out. Onslaught of Shadows doesn't do enough. There is the Empire's Divide, and Faker still gets a kill. On to Smeb. Bengi making it out of the fight here. Faker finally goes down to Kuro, but look at this. SK Telecom, Marin and Bang just decide to take an inhibitor while this fight happens in top lane, and they're gonna be able to make it out, it looks like. Wisdom coming in, he still has his ult, but yeah, the team's too far behind. Bengi engaging as well, and SKT. Yeah, they may have given Koo Tigers a couple kills, but they got an inhibitor in response for it. Yeah, just good poise, keep on pushing, don't worry about your teammates dying too much, just let them absorb the time of the teammates. I mean, it was a really nice uh, zero wall right there from yeah. Kuro, but um, yeah, as I was saying in that last fight, at, at a certain point, if you are if you know you're going to outscale like the Tigers will, you just be happy you got that kill on Marin. Maybe you start pushing up the mid lane at that point. You've already denied the Dragon. Hmm. 
Um, but fighting in the other team's power spike, even though it was a 4v5, because they had already lost a lot of their big ultimates, problematic, I think. And, uh, but also, you don't expect SKT to be able to do that. That was yeah. stunning. Man, SKT is going to take objectives extremely fast now that they've got double Trinity Forts, double Blade of the Ruined King. It's a bit, it's a bit crazy. So, back to the split pushing. Looks like Faker and Marin may be trying to make a pick here. There's Equalizer slowing down Smeb a bit. Smeb has his ultimate. Faker coming in. Can he chase him through it? Equilibrium Strike does that damage. Gets a stun. Smeb getting lower. Here comes Bengi and Wolf. Man, five on one. Smeb not standing a chance. Well, I think things have sufficiently come off the rails for the Koo Tigers at this point. I'm just so in awe of if we take a look at that Varus comp from last week and we take a look at this one, SKT's ability to play around their team compositions yeah. is just so spot on these days. There we go, Koo trying again. Kuro gets blown up, goes down, bang with the kill, and without that damage, SKT able to go in, heals coming in from Gorilla, pushing back SK Telecom just for the moment. Huge pulverize from Wolf, though, and that is going to be the end of the team fight. A clean ace from SK Telecom, and with the death timers being as they are, I wonder if they can just end it right here. Yeah, they definitely can. Just they can push through. They have a minion wave incoming. Yep. Uh, they have two sheens. Yep, Smeb's back. <laughs> Spooting him right out again. To deal the damage. Yeah, they just want to keep him out of the fight right now. Slowly take down wow. these inhibitor turrets. And well, WTF, two sheens. <laughs> and SK Telecom uses those to take down the Ku Tigers. They're just kind of messing around right now. There we go. The Nexus finished off. And SKT with a pretty stunning team fight into a pretty impressive win here in game number one. I can't believe they did that. I, I, they did it. <laughs> they did it. I, Believe yes, it, man. It's SK yes, Telecom. The Koo Tigers made mistakes, but that was uh, that was a very impressive 4v5 from SKT. Yeah. And they ch and the thing that's so scary is that they snowballed that into a win. One 4v5 that they win, it the game's over. Yep. So great closure from SKT. About as textbook as you can get. And I. Look, I don't really know what that mid Aurelia was for. I mean, it wasn't like Faker was bad at playing Aurelia. He was great, but. It didn't well, seem to do a whole lot out of the laning phase. It seems like SKT, though, just has this ability now to put Faker on whatever champion they want.